Hi everyone. Um, in this video, I will explain how you can uh, work with uh, Matomo Analytics and BI software in order to, let's say, have a beautiful dashboard. So uh, the first thing to, let's say, to explain is uh, what do we mean by a beautiful dashboard? So uh, it is the Matomo's dashboard. As you can see, you can do uh, a lot of things with it, like uh, moving here and there. Uh, the widgets, uh, you can actually revamp uh, the dashboard by working just on one column, four columns, three columns. Uh, you can even create some custom reports. You can even create your own custom plugins. And there are even ways that you can actually just export a given widget and then uh, reuse it afterward on a custom HTML page. But that's not going to be the scope of uh, today's video. Today's video is about uh, when, let's say, the, the marketing or the communication department is knocking at the door of the people using Matomo within the company and say, hey, um, we need actually uh, to use either Tableau software or either Microsoft BI or either Google Data Studio in order to send data uh, to a software where we can easily play with uh, the data and make, uh, let's say, gorgeous uh, reports and statistics and adding our comments in order to say why actually uh, the traffic uh, went up at some moment and so on and so forth. The only issue that you have with Google Data Studio is that you are sending data to Google. Uh, if you use Microsoft BI, you are sending the data to Microsoft. And if you are using Tableau software, uh, last time I checked, actually, it was in AWS Cloud. So to me, you are sending them to Amazon, and that's uh, that's an issue. So to me, Tableau software is not an option. Microsoft BI is not an option. And Google Data Studio is not an option. So uh, what do you have left? And what do you have less left in the open source, uh, let's say, community? And I was discussing with uh, someone over the phone who told me that actually the dev department was playing with uh, a software called Metabase. So um, I had a look at it, and that's kind of, of great. So it's kind of uh, an open source data visualization software. So um, it's still active, which is a good thing. You have uh, many contributors. You can have a look at the license over here, which is uh, under the GNU uh, Afero license. So it's a bit different than the one of um, Matomo, but it's somehow uh, within the um, free software, uh, let's say, spirit, which is uh, a good thing. And um, I thought that it would have been difficult to install, but uh, I figured it out by myself. I installed it uh, locally, and this is what I'm going to introduce you today, is how you can integrate uh, Matomo with uh, Metabase. I would like to thank, uh, actually, uh, many people uh, for that. I would like to thank uh, this guy who actually wrote uh, these given articles uh, back in 2014. I would like to thank as well um, the Tim Abram who wrote uh, two great tutorials about uh, Metabase. And I would like to thank as well uh, Lucas Winkler that you can find here uh, on the forum, which uh, really helped me a lot about understanding the concept behind uh, databases. So um, I'm not going to develop that much about how you can install a Metabase. I guess if I figured it out, and as I'm not a developer, you will be able uh, to figure it out on your own. So uh, everything is located on the Metabase uh, website. And, uh, it's explaining you how you can uh, install it. So um, actually, on these videos, they are uh, giving you a great tutorial about how to install it on Amazon Web Services. But in my case, I decided to install it uh, locally. I didn't use Docker. Uh, I really installed it uh, locally, and I didn't get any, any issue uh, in installing it. So um, the first things that you have to know is when you will uh, start running Metabase, you will have actually several questions which will be asked to you. And it's kind of interesting to see that uh, they are offering you uh, the possibility to integrate it with Google Analytics. Actually, you cannot see uh, it listed because probably it has not been uh, updated, but uh, it's offering you the possibility to do it. And um, and you don't have Matomo, actually. Uh, Matomo here stands for MySQL. So you need, of course, uh, to just put your credential of your 
uh, MySQL database in order for Metabase to be able uh, to look through your um, database of Metal. But uh, once you do it, actually, you get access to this uh, given page. So um, I just have found one drawback with uh, Metabase. I mean, for me, uh, every time that I'm trying to change the language and put it in English, it just doesn't work. And I think it put it to me by default on um, in French. So as you can see, even if I select here English, it's not working. So unfortunately, I will have to do uh, the translation for you uh, today from uh, French to English. So sorry for that. Um, OK, so how does it work? It's once it's installed, uh, this is what it looks like. So it's uh, browsing straight away, actually, all your tables that you have uh, within your MySQL uh, database. And they are just grabbing out all the different tables that you have. So in order to understand what those tables include, uh, you have the great documentation of Matomo, which is over here, database schema, which is here in order to explain you what are all the different, let's say, columns of each table, uh, what are they doing, what are uh, the different data that they are grabbing, and so on and so forth. Um, in our case, we're going to make things simple. And that's where I really thank, actually, uh, Tim Abram for the video that he made, because uh, it makes uh, things easier. So um, the concept of Metabase is to ask some question. Uh, and asking questions means creating a report in order for this report to be able to answer uh, to people's questions. So. Uh, let's start. So I'm just going to ask a question. This is what it means here, ask a question. Um, it's going to be like, um, I mean, I'm going to look for a custom one. And it's telling me, OK, please select a table. So I'm going to select a table. So here it's linked to my MySQL database. And in my case, I just would like to get a graph showing me uh, how many visits I'm getting over time. So. Um, I know that by looking through this part, I will know that this is oops, log underscore visit. OK, so I'm going to look through the log visit table. And the reason why I would like to look through a visit table is that it contains the information that I'm looking for, which is uh, the, um, the visit and the day. And that's what we call uh, do, do, do the visits. Um, where is it? The visit. Um, yeah, the visit first action time, right? So that's the time of the first visit interaction. So that's what I would like to play with. So um, let's pick this one up. So visit first interaction action time. So. Uh, I need to look for the log visit. So here are the different tables. So I'm going to pick up the log visit. Once I do it, so if I click here on get the answer, it's going to parse uh, the full database that I have locally. So that will be exactly the same equivalent of going like this. Uh, like So in my case, just because it's not uh, long enough, so I'm just going to say visit over here. And please display me the, oops. OK, oops. Sorry for that. Um, execute it. So. OK, and look, visit it. Yep display. OK, so here you get all the information, same thing as what you get over here, right? Um, so in our case, we are only interested in uh, picking up what I said, which is the visit uh, first uh, action time, not the visit last action time. So this is where you click here on aggregate, and you see uh, visit. And in our case, it's visit first action time. OK, so you select it. And then uh, if you click here on get the answer, what it will do is that it will just uh, display you the different uh, dates. So here, uh, you can just now say, OK, instead of having raw data, this is what it means here, 
uh, you can just go for uh, the number of uh, lines which are concerned. So it's going to give you uh, the number of visits, from my understanding, per uh, date. And um, this is a table, so that's probably not the sexiest uh, report you would like to get. And you are probably looking for uh, a line, so that's uh, what you can uh, what you can get out of it. And then you can. Uh, so it's basically the same example that's from the video. Okay, I did not invent anything. I just look at the video, find out that this example that he was giving was great. And I really thank uh, him for that. So now I can uh, really save it. And here, um, when you save it, because the concept of um, metabase is before all asking questions to people and give uh, answers. So uh, how the traffic is going on, OK? And um, then in my case, I'm going to say, Send it over there. OK, uh, do you want to add it to the dashboard? You can say yes. Uh, which dashboard? So I'm going to create a new dashboard. I'm going to uh, my create dashboard for YouTube. OK, and, um, and that's it. So uh, let's add it. So here you have my dashboard, so it's not that's sexy, so I'm gonna put it like this, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, so now I can add. Uh, I can add many things. Ajouting question. Now that's not. Yeah, I want to add some text because basically this is what people want, right? To explain uh, what went uh, up, for example, and we're gonna say, for example, uh, we did some SEO from end of June to. Um, beginning of September. Okay, so we did some um, SEO from beginning of June to uh, beginning of September. Yep, beginning of September. Yep, and uh, so you would like to get your annotation up and running. So that's what you do over here. And then uh, once it's done, uh, you should save it. So save it. And then uh, you can uh, you can share it. So that's uh, what you may be interested in. So you can get like a link. And through this link, you can just copy and paste it. And then people will access actually to uh, your dashboard that you created, which is uh, the following one with the annotation that you added. So to me, of course, uh, if you compare it straight away with what Microsoft BI and other, uh, let's say, software around here are, are uh, offering, uh, you may, of course, I guess, I'm not an expert in those data visualization software, but see that there are some huge differences. But I have to say that it's really a nice, um, it's a nice start. It's really a great project to me because it really fits to what people really wanted. Is like uh, you own the data, uh, you the the software is free, so it's hosted on your own server. Um, you can easily uh, grab data from one place to put it in another one and make uh, graphic which are uh, which are more. Uh, appealing, let's say. Uh, you can really add your notes. From my understanding, I'm not really sure, but uh, you can probably uh, refresh the page in order to take uh, the last uh, the last data. Here I haven't had something, so uh, I don't know, but I, I just started to play with this software just uh, yesterday night, so I'm not an expert uh, of it, but I guess that you can do plenty of things uh, with it. And I think it's really interesting because uh, you are not sending your data to GAFAM. And uh, and the all other thing to, to know and that I did not mention within this video is that uh, there are some consequences, actually, of directly uh, calling the database of uh, Matomo. So um, yeah, you need to, let's say, I won't say secure your, your database, but that's uh, close to it. I mean, you need to have 
Of course, your database is only a read-only access, but you need to use as well something that I don't know yet, which is called uh, the read-only replica. And from what, from my understanding, is that it's kind of a security that is not jeopardizing actually your your database if you are making too many calls uh, to it. So just consider that this video is just probably just the start of a long series of videos about this software that uh, I think is really full of uh, opportunities and, uh, and hope. Uh, thanks for watching.